Good morning. Welcome to Bethel, wherever you are in the world or in California, sitting on your couch, sitting in your kitchen table, you are welcome here. Before we start, we have a few announcements. I would like to invite you to join me on Tuesday to welcome my children who are coming to visit Bethel. All the information is on page uh, 12 in your bulletin. So now let's take a deep breath together to allow the spirit that connects us with one another to be. The spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings, regardless our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life, when it's taken away from one, affects all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. The fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks to the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. To the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water of your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The opening hymn is on page five in your bulletin. Come all you people. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, 
that your name may be known throughout the earth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our summer music is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms by Ed and Ellen Vicky. At this point in our service, we move on to our prayer requests. Um, so I will begin by saying, called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. In particular, please pray for Star, Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Sadie, Sophia, Gabe, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Eileen, Ken, Jackie, Cecilia, <coughs> excuse me, Martha, Richard and Vicky, Tina and Marty, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Megan, Whitney, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Doris, Eloise, Steve, Tom, Carol, Chris, Ellen, Jill, Dolly, and last but not least, Ian. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, oh, who might that be? That's actually my cousin. He's a year younger than me. And on Friday, he suffered a small heart attack. Um, I found out that on Monday, having actually spoken to him by telephone on the Saturday and he never mentioned anything to me, but he did send a thank you email to me saying that because of our service that Minerva and myself have been sending over to my sisters and my cousin in particular, because of that, he has come back to faith. He was brought up in the church 
but uh, he had drifted away just like I did when I lost my mum and so he is now uh, actually with his grandson the last thing they do together is say the Lord's Prayer before they actually go to sleep and so I just wanted to mention that I know now that he has had two stents put in his arteries on the left side of his heart and he is doing well he's recuperating for two weeks in a hospital back in England and also we need to pray for the loss of loved one so the family and friends of Charles Coons especially his daughters Shirley Jacobson, Jeannie Denning and Sue, Sue Carlson and their families so Please, if everybody can especially pray for those people. We also need to pray for those uh, to, in connection with the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to bring hope, comfort, help and healing to all whose lives have been affected by the disease. We remember especially those who are most vulnerable, the elderly, medical care providers, and our siblings from the community of colour. We also need to pray for the medical personnel, the first responders, and those in the military, the men, women, and families of those who serve to protect and help us. We also need to pray for our society, that there may, there may be an end to violence, suspicion, and hatred, and that God's peace may envelop us and help us to see each other through God's eyes of love. We also need to pray for our seminary graduate, Sarah Gorman, and congratulate her and send her blessings on her receiving her first call to St. John's Lutheran Church in Marion, Wisconsin. She will actually be ordained in Fresno on the 26th of August. We also need to pray for our benevolence for this month, the Fresno Rescue Mission. And finally, we need to pray for our own church, especially Pastor Mitch, the church council, the church staff members, the nominating committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel. So we ask all of these various things in your son's precious name. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 45, reading verses 1 through 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be no, neither plowing, plowing or harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, 
and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honoured in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother's his brother, sorry, Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm today is Psalm 67. Our cantor will sing the odd number and then we will do the even number. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 11, reading verses 1 through 2a and 29 through 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Here ends our second lesson this morning.
The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the fifth year chapter. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out in the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile the person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the loss of sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon here is on page 8 in your bulletin, Let the Whole Creation Cry.
In today's gospel, a curious encounter occurs between Jesus and a woman from Canaan, a non-Jewish. Hear how it happens. Seeing the fame healer, the woman from Canaan, who is also referred to as the Syrophoenician in Mark's gospel, cries out to Jesus to help her daughter, who is possessed by a demon. When Jesus does not reply, she continues to cry out until Jesus' disciples demand that he send her away because she keeps shouting after us. Jesus does not seem to think that this woman's problem is worth his attention. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and continues, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. The woman, undaunted, replies, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. In the face of her persistence, Jesus changes his mind, commends her faith, and heals her daughter. I have read and heard a wide variety of interpre interpretations of this text throughout my life. The vast majority have focused on patriarchy, how women didn't have much value in the society at that time, and imperialism, how the Jews looked down on the Gentiles and considered them unclean. For some readers, the male character is seen as playing the leadership role, testing the woman's faith, and the woman's role is seen as subordinate to Jesus' role. Today, I invite you to read the story of that woman for who she is, a human being with dignity, an identity, who asks to be valued, respected in her ethnicity and the diversity she brings to Jesus' circle. In other words, a human being who reclaims her place in the creation story as one created by the most high God, even though she seems to have been forgotten, undervalued, and dismissed. The encounter between the two happens in the district of Tyre and Sidon, located north of Galilee. Geographically speaking, Jesus is the one who crosses borders. He needs to rest after leaving the Jewish territory. It seems every time Jesus needs a respite in Matthew, he has to withdraw somewhere else. He did it after healing a man on the Sabbath, and after hearing of the death of John the Baptist. When the woman hears Jesus is in town, she comes to cry out to Jesus with a desperate plea. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. A demon is oppressing my daughter. Okay, let us pause and take a deep breath here. A Canaanite is calling Jesus Lord? Kyrie, son of David, the title of the Jewish Messiah. But the thing that you need to know, as a Canaanite woman, a person outside of Jesus' circle, for her, for her to use the messianic word is to name the truth of who Jesus is. She publicly acknowledges who Jesus is before the disciples. At first, Jesus does not respond. The lack of response from Jesus could mean anything. Perhaps Jesus wants to be incognito. Perhaps he does not hear the call. Perhaps Jesus does not think the woman is worth listening to because of her ethnicity. In his commentary of Matthew, Reverend John Nolan observes, 
we ought to understand that it is not at once clear what he ought to do. The woman does not let Jesus' behavior discourage her in a plea for healing for her daughter. She persists. And the disciples urge him to send her away. Jesus finally answers, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus wanted the disciple and the woman to understand fully that his ministry in the brief time he had on earth was very focused. He was the son of David, the Messiah. That fact did not admit this Canaanite woman to the benefits of the covenant made with the Jews. The kingdom had to be fully offered to them first and in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of the kingdom. So all the woman could do is ask for mercy, the universal mercy as a non-Israelite. The woman persists, kneels and cries out again, Lord, help me. If you have been following, you will notice that this is the first time in the story Jesus and the woman are directly interacting with one another. In his reply, Jesus uses the metaphor of bread, which can mean a lot. Jesus breaks bread together with his disciples in the Last Supper. Breaking bread together with people can imply, can imply alliance and friendship or community. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Bread can also mean income or what we need to survive. God provided manna, bread, to the people in the desert. And Jesus refuses this bread to the woman. Perhaps the most offensive word Jesus uses in the passage is the word dog. Instead of calling the woman who she is, a child of God. In some cultures, dogs are considered unclean scavengers. In one parable that Jesus told, Lazarus' miserable plight is made even more wretched by the dogs that would lick his sores. This part of the story has always been a challenge for me to reconcile. How could Jesus who claimed to be the son of the God in whose image the woman is created, how could he refer to her as a dog? Why is Jesus putting down the woman who comes to him with a plea? Jesus is in a position of power. What would you do in a position of power? Here's what I heard someone say the other day, and I think it makes sense. Jesus is actually not talking down to the woman. He's voicing the prejudices and biases of the onlookers and the disciples. He knows what's within their hearts when they tell her to go away. They are willing to shut her up, refuse her the bread that will nourish her, compare her to a dog. He's basically voicing the thoughts and attitudes. How many times have you been pushed away by someone in power? How many times have you experienced someone has been pushed away by someone in power? How many times have you been told you are nothing because of economic status the way you dress, the way you look, the way you talk, and maybe your gender. And then the woman gets it. Her answer is stunning. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from the children drop. 
she accuses to the wall of a dog in relation to Israel. She knows the Messiah has come to Israel first. She may not be able to sit down at the Messiah's table and eat with the children, but she would be allowed to pick up some of the crumbs they drop. She wants some of the mercy of God that goes outside and beyond the promise to Israel. God's saving grace to all people. The woman knows that God's faithfulness to Israel will result in blessing to everyone else. Jesus is keeping God's promise first to Israel so rest of us, the rest of us can trust him to keep his promise to extend that blessing to all the world. And we see that happen as Jesus blesses the woman by healing her daughter. Here I am, a woman of color from another place, and you have called me as your pastor. You have imitated Jesus in this passage by listening to me and receiving me for the person I am. So Bethel, you are living the gospel. The Canaanite woman's story this morning is a reminder that membership in God's pe people is a matter of grace, not of heritage. In the abundance and prosperity of the kingdom, there is a wideness in God's mercy for all. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one, wherever you are, by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 10 in your bulletin. In Christ there is no east or west. Thank you.
Go in peace, be safe, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.